A variable amperage controller on a TIG machine is something like this foot pedal. You go up to the machine and you dial in the maximum allowable output you want out of this pedal, which let's just say it's 100 amps. So everything between 0 and 100 amps will change or give you a different amount of amps depending on where your foot is positioned. Now a fixed amperage controller is something like this trigger switch. If you dial in 100 amps on the machine, click on the trigger, it's going to give you 100 amps the entire way through. There is no adjustment. Now the big question then becomes, can I weld with that same consistency as the foot pedal without actually having the control? The answer is yes. There's just a technique and that's what I'm going to go over in this video. All right, guys, this episode is brought to you by WeldMetalsOnline.com. Make sure you check out WeldMetalsOnline for all of your TIG welding coupons, consumables, filler wire, puzzles, fun stuff to do, and more. Make sure you use the code TFS10 at checkout to save 10%. So normally we dial our machines into one amp per thousandth of an inch or 40 amps per millimeter. That means that this aluminum eighth inch coupon should be welded normally at about 125 amps. So that's what I have the machine set to. Let's see how this actually works out. Let's see, we'll go with some uh, 1 16th filler. It's ready to roll. Okay, not too bad. Now that's a daisy fresh cold coupon. Hasn't been welded, hasn't been preheated, nothing. Just straight out of the pack and right onto the table to weld it. So now it's been heated up. And since we don't have any kind of control over our amperage, the only thing that we can do is speed up or move with it. So after the first pass, it's gonna be a little bit heat soaked. Let's see how fast it takes me to get through it now. That's a little bit hotter. I sped up a little bit, but that's a little bit hot. So just out of curiosity sake, I know I'm gonna have to dial those amps back a little bit, but what happens if I go for a third pass after it's been welded twice? Let's check this out. Okay, that got a lot hotter. So yeah, I can probably only weld at 125 amps if the coupon is cold. And that brings us into our first lesson about this one. I'm pretty sure you've heard me say it before, you're definitely going to hear me say it again, time equals heat, not amperage. The more time you spend in one spot, regardless of your amperage, the hotter it's going to get. So in order to combat that second round after it was already heat soaked, I had to go faster. And to try and keep up with it on the third pass that I did on this one, I was flying, but my accuracy went right out the window. So running at 125 amps is kind of impractical. We could actually dial it down. Now if we dial it down, it's going to take a little bit longer for it to come up to temperature to start welding the beginning, but by the end of it, when it's already hot, it may just very well be right about the right tempo that we can keep up with it and not get it to run too hard. But where do we actually dial that into? Let's just take a random number. We'll take 25 amps off the top. See what happens at 100 amps. Well, I had a bit of a fumble in there and I felt like I was running pretty slow. And there was even one point where I completely missed the puddle because it wasn't quite really running the way that I normally like it to run. So while this bead does look pretty good, it took a little bit while longer to get through it. So let's just see what it looks like on pass number two where we have it already up to a higher temperature. Let's see how fast I get to roll through this one. You know what? 
that was a little bit better of my pace, or at least more of the pace that I like to maintain with something like this. So that one might be okay. It's not as hot as the second one on 125 amps, but it is a little bit warm. So I'm pretty sure on the third one here, it's, I'm probably gonna have to get moving. But let's just see. That got pretty hot again. Started out okay, but then I started losing control. I got some pretty, uh, pretty gnarly looking welds on this one. So maybe 100 amps, maybe not. We're getting closer though, right? So maybe we can turn it down a little bit more. I'll go to 90. I don't want to go too cold, but we'll see what happens. Same 1 16th filler. Well, this is kind of painfully slow. I feel like I'm just waiting. So what does this teach us? What we're ultimately looking to achieve here is a comfortable high amperage average, meaning we don't wanna run it on book settings, we wanna match it to what we can do at this level based on our speed. So in other words, we're not gonna be running you know, flat coupons all day long, we're gonna be running some different joints like outside corners, thin metal, thick metal, all the rest of that good stuff. So we have to do some tests, we have to figure out where we're comfortable with on certain materials, positions, joints, and everything else like that. But it's all going to change. So there's two things that you can do. One, practice your speed and find out in which position you're gonna be most comfortable at that amperage. Then, at that range, that's your high level maximum amperage. That's where you would operate typically. The second thing you can do is continuously adjust the amperage on your machine. Again, that's after practice. So once you figure out how many of those joints or how many of those welds or amps you can run at, whatever the case is, you kind of have an average of where you would typically operate that joint. So let's try some thin metal, 16 gauge outside corner. Now just taking a wild guess here, I'm gonna turn the machine down to 45 amps. We'll see how this runs. Set this up, get a nice little tack on here. Looks like it's flowing pretty smooth. We'll get one in the middle here. Boy, this is taking too long to get that tack. I don't know on that amps. Maybe that's a little bit too low. Let's just see how this goes. Now for the majority of this, it actually looks pretty good. Not too bad. Nice little stack, good shiny crown on it. Everything looks good except the inside. There is no penetration on that whatsoever until I got to the end of it and there's a little bit at the beginning from the tack. So that would tell me that I'm a little bit too cold and of course I felt like I could go a little bit faster at the same time. So let's try this again with more amps. So I took an educated guess and settled on 53 amps. That happened much faster. That one happened much faster. And let's see it's about the middle here. Much better. So, 1 16th filler. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, blew it out at the end there, not too bad. But that's a pretty looking bead right there. We have a little bit better penetration on the inside. Not full all the way, but we're actually really close to getting there. So maybe 
based on how I felt on that one, I had a lot better speed. Now I could probably stick around that number or maybe I can even go into say 55 amps. That would give it a little bit better breakthrough on the end of the day. The whole point of this is you have to use speed to your advantage. Time equals heat. So the more time you spend there, the faster you gotta go in order to control it. So if your puddle is starting to run away and get really wide on you, then you gotta start moving, you gotta get faster. But if it's something that you can't keep up with or you're having trouble getting good accuracy and good results, then you have to dial it back. But remember, it's gonna take longer for it to heat up and get moving, and of course, at the end of it, you're still gonna to have to get, you know, speed through it, depending on the joint, how long it is, and everything else like that. There's a lot that goes into this one, but the key word here, practice. The only way you're ever gonna get better at it is to practice. So remember, weldmetalsonline.com, TFS10 at checkout. That's the best place to score welding coupons, filler material, TIG welding consumables, premium brand products like CK Worldwide and Ferric. There's a bunch that's going on there and a bunch more. And if you use TFS10 at checkout, you'll save. I really want to thank you guys for watching. I hope this kind of helps you out a little bit. If you want me to dig in deeper, drop me a comment. I'll see if I can get a little bit more specific. I'll see you all in the next episode.